بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد The story of Musa alayhi salatu was salam there's a lot of lessons فلما جاوز قال لفتاه آتنا غداءنا So they had traveled an extensive distance and uh, Musa alayhi salam fell hungry and said لَقَدْ لَقِينَا مِنْ سَفَرِنَا هَذَا نَسَبَا We have really exhausted ourselves tafsir al-wajiz ta'aban wa lam yajid an-nasab fi jami'i safari that this journey was very comfortable except when they transcended the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to be alert so we should be alert, we should be vigilant all the time. When a person is negligent and ghafil and not aware of the situation, situational awareness, as it is said, then uh, as Alama in Tafsir Bawawi has mentioned that Ulqiya ala Musa al Ju Ba'da Mujawazati Sakhra. That hungerness came after they traveled the distance which they're not supposed to travel. So then they had to go back and retrace and retract their steps. So the whole story started where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make the tarbiyah of Musa alayhi salam once he, he addressed them. And he was asked, nas a'lamu? Who's the most knowledgeable of people? Qala ana. He said, I am. Fa'atab Allahu alayhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach Musa alayhi salam. Fa'awha Allah ilayhi. Inna li abdan bimajma'i al-bahrain. That at the junction of the two seas, there is somebody, Khidr alayhi salam, who is more knowledgeable than you. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most knowledgeable, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach Musa alayhi salam that you think so on earth, you are most knowledgeable. No, you are incorrect. Ya Rabbi wa kayfa li bihi. Ya Allah, what should I do? So he was instructed, Ta'khudhu ma'aka hootan fataj'alahu bimiktalin. Take a fish in a container and whenever the hoot, the fish, which is the hoot in Arabic, gets lost, then uh, that's where you will find Khidr. So he did that. Thumman talaqa. And they left. And with him was Yusha bin Noon alayhi salam. So they came to that rock and they slept. So the fish moved vigorously in the container, in the vessel. فَخَرَجَ مِنْهُ فَسَقَتَ فِي الْبَحْرِ He got out of the container and it went through the sea like a tunnel. As if it was a tunnel, it went directly into the sea. وَأَمْسَكَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْحُوتِ جِرْيَةَ الْمَاءِ فَصَارَ عَلَيْهِ مِثْلَ الْتَاقِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped the flow of the water on both of the sides where uh, the fish went and it was as if it was like a tunnel. So when they woke up, then uh, they realized, hey, what has happened? The, um, we slept and uh, Yusha noticed it, but he forgot. And they traveled another day and another night until the next morning. Hatta idha kana min al -ghad. قال موسى لفتاه موسى الإسلام تقول يشا أتنا غداءنا لقد لقينا من سفرنا هذا نسبا that uh, bring our breakfast we have uh, suffered much fatigue on this journey so شيطان 
made them forget. وَمَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانِ Shaitan made them forget. So for us to be aware, to be prepared, for us to take the necessary precautions and be vigilant, Shaitan doesn't want you to do that because when there is nuksan that comes to you, it's nuksan to your deen. So what uh, they had to do, they had to فَرْتَدَّ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمَا قَصَصَا They had to retrace their footstep and go back to the rock. And that's where they went to Musa, uh, to Khidr السلام. So uh, then the whole incident of Musa السلام, happened فَانْتَلَقَا So in the story there are a lot of lessons, just a few of them. We always need guidance. So if it's a Nabi of the time, you cannot say I am most knowledgeable. And there are different forms of knowledge, different skills. So we, we need to identify firstly our incompetence. Secondly, فَانْتَلَقَى To learn you need to go out, you need to make mujahada, you need to make sacrifice. Number three, you need to be patient and follow instructions. So Khidr السلام, told Musa السلام, that don't ask any questions. Just observe. Doesn't matter what the situation is. So your Ustad, your teacher will give you instructions. Learn to follow instructions. Number four, if you don't follow instructions, you will tire yourself, you will waste resources, you will waste wealth, you will waste your time, you will waste a lot of potential in the wrong avenues. So we have to learn to follow instructions. And when we want to progress, it will be based on our teacher. So Allah took the Nabi of that time on a journey and he learned a lot. So for our deen also search, there are many ulama, but as an individual, whether it's for ilm, whether it's for bi'at, we have to exhaust ourselves to find the best suitable for our reformation, for akhirah. When we ask a masla, go to a mufti that will give you a fatwa where you are consoled. You've exhausted avenues to know this is the right person. Likewise in our dunya as well, any skill that we need to learn, find the best. Any people we need to employ, find suitable skilled people. Likewise another lesson is that even after trying, you still need to be patient. Musa salam was on his journey, he was given guidance and hidayat. So when you embark on something and you decided, okay, you know what, I'm ready to sort it out. But still be persistent, don't just stop there. Then Musa salam paid some school fees. So I, I, ultimately we want to put ourselves in a position where we pay the least school fees. And Allah made the lessons confirming the reformation and the spiritual benefit of Musa Islam, just conforming to that. How each incident was connected to the life of Musa Islam. If Allah give us to week, we'll discuss it at another time. But this whole journey had so many lessons. So we also, we should always check ourselves and see how we can improve and where we are wrong and when situations go otherwise also we need to improvise so there was a woman who went for to an attorney a lady and she wanted to ask about a divorce so the, the, the attorney said what grounds do you have madam she said about six acres his question was what grounds what he's asking and what she's answering so he said no i i, I think you don't understand properly. Let me rephrase the question. Do you have a grudge? You asking about a divorce? You want a divorce? Do you have a grudge? She said, no, just a parking space. So again, he's a lawyer. He said, let me rephrase it. Let me try again. Does your husband beat you up? So she replied, no, I always get up at least an hour before he does. So the attorney realized he's fighting a losing battle. So he said, Madam, are you sure you want a divorce? So she said, I'm not the one who wants the divorce. 
but my husband does. He claims he cannot communicate. He claims we don't know how to communicate. So where the problem is, there's no problem with the husband. The problem is everything with this lady. But she cannot identif identify things. So we were busy with the vehicle safety, etc. So simple things which can save us from many inconveniences. So whether in the general overall, for example, a person's pot potential target for, for crime, for, for kidnapping, have you done a penetration test? Has, uh, has anybody come out and see the potential risks? So infiltrate your system, whether they hack into your computers and see your bank accounts, track your money movements, whether they hack into your phone, game over. They know your every movement, they know everybody you're communicating with. Um, simple things like stuff, it's a breach. Uh, as lie detectors, uh, tests have been done. And a simple way for a person even not going so far is plan your own kidnapping and see how easy it is for somebody to target you. Even an amateur on the street will pull it off against the advanced CIT vehicle, cash and transit, the high, uh, high syndicates that, that, that have got the skills and they're professionals. Uh, just the ordinary, normal, average person on the street, we're still vulnerable and sus susceptible. So how defenseless are we? A person has a vehicle example, so Possibly if the vehicle is hijacked and they put a person in the boot of the car. Have you ever went in the boot of your car and see how you can escape? Have you kept tools in the vehicle that you need to escape? Do you know that uh, the lights on either sides could be removed? So what do you keep in the boot, etc. Just simple things. So a person needs to go out, they're going to travel in a vehicle. Um, there can be an emergency situation. Have you hidden some cash somewhere in the vehicle? So a, st a cash stash in an emergency. Do people know exactly where you're going? What's the ETA? What's the updates? Are you very lax? Do you pitch, pick up hitchhikers? Another scam is a lady is on the side of the road, well dressed, uh, endowed with beauty and her bonnet is open. So to, to, to seduce male drivers, it looks like you're stuck. You're going to go and help her. You're going to get stuck. So a pretty lady stuck on the road may get you stuck. And this pretty lady may, may end up with your situation not being pretty. So there are predators out there, ladies. It could be on a train where she's dressed up. Uh, the idea is to get you in a relationship, you go in seclusion with her, uh, this camera's footage, and uh, now you are blackmailed. So in every situation, we have to consider threats. Every person around you is a threat. When you get to the traffic lights, well, what's the protocols? So uh, when a person gets to their car, let's say they come in from a mall, etc. When you get to your car, is your keys ready? Do you have your safety equipment, your pepper spray, whatever gear equipment that you have? That should be ready within a second. It needs to be accessed. Otherwise, the scammers are always upgrading the systems. What systems have we upgraded? So one of the scams is a water bottle on the windscreen. So let's say somebody comes, put their shopping in the boot. Um, in the vehicle, you get into the vehicle ready to drive, you see a bottle on the wipers. So you get out of the car to remove it immediately. Whatever they can grab, they grab and run. If they can hijack the car, they hijack the car. If they need to uh, ambush you, they ambush you. So it's a simple water bottle on the windscreen. But so much coincidence. Uh, a person's driving, they nudge you at the back of your car, you think so it's an accident, you get out to see the damage. It wasn't uh, an accident, it was planned. You see blue lights, the blue brigade, but there are many fake vehicles like that. What protocols do you follow? You sell in your car, people come as potential buyers, they come with cash. Um, somebody, you want to buy a vehicle, you need to bring the cash. You drive in, let's say you go under a bridge, 
So the vehicle in front already plotted you a long while ago and they know they want to hijack this car. So they'll make sure it's a single lane, they'll be in front of you. As soon as you come under the bridge, they'll do a dead stop, immediately jump out, grab the vehicle and gone. Within five seconds, it's all over. So being vigilant and, and, and aware of, of, of different situations. When you get to your vehicle, do you have an inspection system? Can your trap, uh, vehicle be booby trapped? So before you're using it, when there's a service, and it comes for a repair, there's vulnerabilities. As you send the vehicle, let's say you never use a, 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 a registered service, or you register a registered service, but they got somebody in that structure to booby trap your vehicle. So it could have gone for a normal service to a reputable dealer, but they may be compromised. If you left the vehicle unattended at a mall, uh, brake cables could have been cut, the wheel nuts has been loosened. So you have an issue and then you have a bigger issue when you stop your vehicle. Access to the petrol tank, they put sugar in the petrol tank, a simple thing like sugar, person will get stuck somewhere, they're waiting for you. Likewise, a draining of fluids, whether it's your brake fluid, your, your engine fluid, etc. The tires could have been damaged. They put uh, something under the tire so that when you drive, you get a puncture. Likewise, a puncture in the radiator. So we have to be conscious of all this here, vehicle inspection. Even do simple things like uh, the paintwork, the mirrors, the bumpers, the hump, uh, uh, hubcaps, um, light fittings, any tempering, force entry, oil marks, fingerprints, so do we, do we do a vehicle inspection? Do we look inside the vehicle before getting into the vehicle? The arches of the, the vehicle. So that's a very good place to put tracking devices. So just where the tires is, the vehicle uh, arches, they put uh, tracking devices. So. A tracking device can track a person for a month, some even longer. So uh, a person's compromised now. So wherever a magnetic device can be put, uh, that's a compromise. So where you park your vehicle, is there visibility? Uh, do you reverse park? What's your getaway mode? How fast can you get? So we park normally frontwards, where you can't get out, you have to reverse, you're already ambushed, you can't see. The method you get into the car, do you just get in, or you get in facing outwards. So if you look at the uh, Amal, if it's a right and drive vehicle, and a person wants to get in with their right leg, then you'll have to sit on the seat, put your right leg in, then your left leg. Now if you make Amal on that Sunnah, you'll have situational awareness. Are people hiding? Um, is there anybody who using jammers on the remotes? So, uh, did we ever check underneath of the vehicle? Do we have pictures of the undercarriage of the vehicle? So, uh, they could be devices, they could be uh, other equipment, and there's different motives. So, if you got this full imagery under, and somebody else has to just scan the vehicle, so when you got the vehicle, took the image. So somebody could see if there was any, any tempering. Um, likewise, simple things like uh, booby traps. A person's life can be at risk as well. So how advanced are we in our own protection? So uh, you've got your basic alarm system, etc., immobilizer. Let's say if comms goes down, do you have a walkie-talkie system? Do you have an override system on just the locking? For example, the bonnet, the boot, the petrol tank, uh, your wheel nuts, uh, you have lock nuts. So if you had to lock this with, with, with anybody even getting into the car, they weren't able to open it. Or from outside, they won't have access to it. Because you don't know, they could have bypassed it. So... Uh, if the undercoating is possibly, if a person is a VIP and, and high risk, then uh, undercoating the undercarriage.
with fiberglass. The exhaust is a place of co compromise. Is there a wire mesh? So things could be not put into the exhaust. So you have to see the vehicle, how vulnerable it is. Likewise, any other vulnerable points, where they said the traffic lights, whether it is roundabouts, junction, uh, high buildings, tunnels, bridges, uh, bottlenecks, gradients, high banks, uh, where you know you need to go off road and you cannot go with high crime area, etc. So all of these, uh, this information, it is important for us to, to, to start implementing slowly, although uh, initially, and we're saying go to the experts. This is just a simple basic mudakara. We are not experts, but to go to the experts and learn and see what needs to be done. Tamil for today is that Nabi alayhi salatu was salam told sahaba in the Quran tarafu biyadillah one side of the Quran is in the hands of Allah and the other side is in your hands. فَتَمَسَّكُوا بِهِ Hold firmly in onto it فَإِنَّكُمْ لَن تَذِلُّوا وَلَن تَهْلِكُوا بَعْدَهُ أَبَدًا Because you will never be astray or destroyed when you hold steadfast onto Quran and Sunnah. So that's our guidelines, that's our priority and uh, we need to um, make amal on that. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.